Germany 1933 to 1934 and Hitler's consolidation of power. We've seen how Hitler has become the Chancellor of Germany by 1933 on the 30th of January, but he hasn't yet got total, complete control of Germany as a dictator. That comes by the end of 1934. So, January 33, he's the Chancellor. On the 27th of February, 1933, is the Reichstag fire. The Reichstag is a German parliament, and on February 27th, it burns down. Now, it burns down, and a man called Marius van der Lubbe, a Dutch communist, is found inside, and he admits to starting the fire. Now, Hitler is very, very clever at this point because at this moment in time, his party, the Nazi party, and the communists are by far and away the two most popular groups. But Hitler certainly hasn't got it all his own way. The communists are a clear, clear rival to him. So the German parliament burns down and a communist is found to be responsible for that fire. As a consequence, Hitler is able to get the communists banned from the Reichstag. He, he gets Hindenburg, the president, to say that they can't be trusted and because they seem to be to blame for the Reichstag fire, they get publicly discredited and they lose support. But crucially, Hitler is able to get them banned from the Reichstag. Now, whether or not it was the communists that burned down the Reichstag or whether Hitler framed van der Lubbe or forced him to do it, no one's entirely sure. However, the Reichstag fire certainly was a very, very important thing in Hitler's consolidation of power. This is because with the communists removed, he's able to pass the Enabling Act. The Enabling Act is passed on 24th of March, 1933. And it's voted for legally, it's voted for in the German, German parliament, in the Reichstag, but because the communists are not there to vote against it, the law gets passed much more easily than it might have been. Yeah, there might well have been intimidation and forced use to some respect, but it was certainly passed in the Reichstag. And because it was passed legally and peacefully and lawfully, it gave Hitler legitimacy. It allowed him to be legitimately and realistically and properly the leader of Germany and the Enabling Act helped him to do so because it gave him huge powers. The Enabling Act allowed Hitler as the Chancellor to rule alone for four years. For four years, he didn't have to consult the Reichstag to get any laws passed, he could do as he wished. He was able, under the Enabling Act, to remove any opposition parties, political parties, from Germany. So he banned the Communists, he banned uh, the Social Democrats, he also banned trade unions to keep the support of um, big businessmen and employers. So although it was done peacefully and, and legally, it gave Hitler huge, huge powers. So the Reichstag fire and the Enabling Act <coughs> work together. They come as a pair and the Enabling Act gets passed because of the Reichstag fire and it gives Hitler huge, huge powers. Hitler has removed any external threats or dangers to his leadership. He's pretty clever. Because he's got rid of people outside the party, he can now focus on removing any potential threats from within the party. So, in 1934, in June, the 29th of June, under what's called the Night of the Long Knives, Hitler kills between 400 and 1,000 members of the SA. SA had been an important group in getting Hitler elected. The brown shirts, the propaganda effect, the breaking up of the meetings, but now they'd served their purpose. Hitler's now got the SS, his personal bodyguards, his elite troops, which are personally loyal to him. And he uses these SS members to go out and kill a list of people on the 29th of June 1934. Anybody that be, could be considered a potential threat to Hitler is removed. Most importantly, Ernst Röhm, the leader of the SA, is killed. Hitler has already removed anybody outside the Nazi party that might pose 
a danger or a threat to him. And now he's removed people from inside the Nazi party. So he is head and shoulders the most important person in the party and he's removed anybody from outside the party. The only person standing in his way is Hindenburg. Hindenburg dies in August 1934, naturally. He's pretty old and he dies naturally. There's no foul play, he dies of natural causes and because he's the president and he's died, Hitler is very, very clever. He combines the role of chancellor with the role of president to form the Führer. And he becomes the Führer. He becomes the leader. He's now in complete and total charge. The final step he does is he gets the army to swear an oath of loyalty. He needs the army on his side to make sure that he has got really authentic and legitimate claim to becoming the person in charge of Germany. The army liked the fact that Hitler got rid of the SA. The army were jealous of the SA and saw them potentially as a threat to them as they might have replaced them as the main force of Germany. But that wasn't going to be the case. Hitler made sure of that on the Night of the Long Knives and also when the army swore the oath of loyalty to Hitler, they swore it to him personally. So the different steps, we get the Reichstag fire, the enabling act, the Night of the Long Knives, the death of Hindenburg and then the oath of loyalty. So by the end of August 1934, Hitler is the dictator, he is the Führer, and the period between 1934 and 1945 of Nazi Germany can begin.